If you had to do a class over again in school, what class would it be? One I chose uh, the history class. Especially, I want to uh, pick up, get uh, the early American history class. So when I joined, learned uh, early American history at my college, community college, maybe uh, two years before, yes, so uh, 2020. So early American history is very interesting, especially for the other different countries people. So I I think at first uh, American, so United States is the uh, United States from the beginning of building the country, but United States was consisted of many European countries. Oh, it's a uh, yeah, so the essence of these European countries, French, Spain, and British. And uh, I think uh, the United States get the closer uh, relationship with the UK at the beginning of time of the starting the United States. But uh, you have many words in the battles in your histories oh it was amazing so surprised so you were i i think the united states uh civilians and people are very have very generous mind with to the european countries so that uh, you fight it <laughs> so, and it was very amazing and that's uh, you, it was very amazing uh, how influence so you get uh, from the European countries and how built so you have and so you have built um, so you are great countries with the influence of other different countries at the beginning of your history. So I was so impressed. Thank you. <laughs>
of all your teachers who've gotten together, what one subject do you think is the easiest to teach and not a gym subject? And oh, not only easiest to teach, but the most, the most absorbed, shall I say, the most that the students really get a, a lot out of. Bert, that would be difficult to say one. I would say the one that most students need these days is English. <laughs> and, and that's because as we use technology and students tend to use their own technology, uh, being able to communicate clearly and effectively, not only in written things like an email or a proposal uh, or a letter, uh, they also need the ability to speak to people one on one. They spend way too much time in front of a screen, whether it's a computer screen, their phone screen or whatever, and they can't communicate. That's what business leaders tell those of us who are teaching today the biggest things. You know, if you can teach them some skills, that's great. But the thing we need more than anything are people who can communicate communicate with each other and be able to do it both in written form and in a personal form. So that's the class I think folks need. Sometimes it gets absorbed and sometimes it doesn't. And unfortunately, it seems like more often than not, it doesn't. Mr. Topic Master. Have you maintained contact with any of your school friends previous? Being the social butterfly that I am, there are probably, I could count on one hand, the schoolmates or people that I graduated with that I might see occasionally or stay in touch with. No one, though, regularly. I have to look, too, is how many of, of my classmates have already died that it's just like, what? So-and-so died? And I'm still living? Whoa. I don't, that's a good thing. Therefore, it's not a priority for me now to be able to want to stay in close contact or in close touch with classmates because at this time in our lives, we have all taken probably separate paths, separate lives, children, grandchildren, and in some cases, some great grandchildren. And that's wonderful for them but being the social butterfly that I am, it's wonderful to see them when I see them. Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you, Sherry. That's a great answer. And now the moment of truth. This is my question, which is kind of a blending of all the ones I've asked you. If I had to do a class again, it should be if I had to do it all again. As you heard me mention in my little speech, my brother was a valedictorian. And therefore, I had that shoved down my throat about studying, studying, studying. Be like your brother, be like your brother, be like your brother. So about the time I hit high school, I decided to excel in mediocrity, which I did. I was squarely in the middle of my graduating class. I have the privilege of my last two years of school, actually my last year of school, I was working 32 weeks at a garage, plus attending classes at school to one in the afternoon. I never took a book home, ever. 
my dad yelled at me one time because he used to he used to drive me home every once in a while. He says, you have to bring a book home. So I remember bringing my algebra book home and I sat it on the table and I picked it up there in the morning when I left. And my biggest regret of all this is that I based my entire career of studying on somebody else's accomplishments. And I think that is the biggest lesson that I've learned that you can't judge yourself by somebody else's accomplishments. You're always going to come up short. Therefore, if I had to do it again, uh, I would have endeavored to persevere and I would have really gotten into my math a lot harder than I did. I was really pretty good at it, but I, I found out later on that I could have been a lot better. And that's it for the table topics. Thank you, Ms. Toastmaster.